Well, we, we talk about a, a biblical worldview. So a worldview is a pattern of ideas, of beliefs, of convictions, habits that help us make sense of the world and God and our relationship to God and the world. Well, there are patterns of truth. Mm -hmm. We can see what's going on in the world. And if we operate on that, not only do we live more successful life personally, but then we become the kind of people who can watch a television show, immediately figure out what worldview is being presented, and then know how to respond intelligently to it. So there are two sides to it. You got to learn a biblical worldview, but then you have to learn the counterfeit worldviews too, so that you know what you're up against. From a biblical perspective, truth isn't just a set of logical propositions. It's a person that Jesus came as the truth. The obviousness of reality is actually a person. That changes everything. This is an invitation to think, and you can do this. Yeah, as it says in Isaiah 1, let us reason together. So in your book, I'm going to let you make the case. You talk about being nice. <laughs> I'm not yeah. a big nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> I have a chapter that's titled kind of tongue in cheek, how to speak the truth and be nice at the same time. And the reason I, I, I wrote that chapter title was, and we realized the number one reason people don't speak the truth is because they want to be nice. They, they don't want mm. to offend. And so I thought, well, you know what? Let me show you how you can engage without being a jerk. Mainly, Charlie, it revolves around asking questions. So a lot of times people come into a conversation and they think they know more than they do. And so they just blurt things out. Tell yes. me why you say that. You know, where did, how did you arrive at that conclusion? What's your basis for it? To say, I don't understand it, therefore it's not true, is the height of narcissism. Okay, so l let me ask you, what is the consequence when a society, civilization, a people or a generation says, I have my own truth? Like if somebody says there's no such thing as truth, they've just proclaimed a truth. Truth <laughs> rises in every situation. Somebody says, well, such and such is unjust. I don't believe in truth. You know, whatever serves me is what's true, but I think that's unjust. Well, what do you mean by justice? There's nothing about this conversation that makes any sense if its underlying premises are actually followed or actually true. If words mean only what I want them to mean, then we can't have this conversation with one another. I can't even have that internal conversation with myself. M. Scott Peck in the 1970s was a psychiatrist, and he said, if you're dealing with a mental health issue, the very first thing you have to do is grapple with reality as it actually is. Exactly right. You can't just say, well, you have your truth, I have my truth, yeah. you have your reality, I have my reality. And so I'll ask him, okay, can you tell the difference between these two statements? Statement A, it is good to care for abandoned puppies. Statement B, it is good to torture abandoned puppies. Can you tell the difference between those two statements? And if they say yes, it's because they know that words actually have meaning, which refutes the entire point of postmodernism, which is that words don't bear any necessary relationship to the things to which they refer. That's exactly right. Do you find that line of questioning persuasive? I find that it. a lot of people will say, hmm, I haven't really thought about that before. But they'll talk about justice. Is justice a real thing? Is justice a category of meaning that really exists? Because if it's not, then what are we, why are we talking about it? And it's inherently totalitarian in right. it, at its root. And we're, that's a great segue to what we're going to talk about tonight. But I do want to talk about that. Be, and we didn't even touch on this. But when you do not have a society, a civilization, a generation, or a people that can say there is truth, you will get a despot, a dictator, a Caesar, a tyrant, or a czar. It will happen. Peter M. Sorokin, the Harvard sociologist who formed the so sociology department there at Harvard, wrote a book of the sociology of all civilization. And he said, in the absence of a moral absolute, in the, exact, yes. in the absence of existence of God, physical force is the only thing that remains. And that, in some ways, that's the postmodernist pitch, which is just, we're just going to go back to tribes.